Welcome to the Live Full Work Fun Podcast. This is the show to encourage you to live your life to the fullest and do fun work that fuels your lifestyle. Hi, I'm your host, Gayla Scrivener. Every week, you'll be introduced to amazing guests, useful resources, and inspirational stories. You'll discover opportunities and perspectives to shape your version of living full and working fun. Hi there, and welcome to the show. If this is your first time, thanks for joining me and checking out the show. And if you're returning, welcome back. You're in for a treat. Well, everyone's in for a treat, actually. So whether you're you're new to the show or, or returning, it's always great to have you here. If you're not already... I really encourage you to join the Live Full Work Fun community. And that's a Facebook group. And all you have to do is search Live Full Work Fun and join the group. Introduce yourself. Spark some conversation on what it means to live full and what's your idea of working fun. You know, gosh, I remember like it was yesterday. But it's in reality about 10 years ago. I was, I was truly growing to dislike the career that I had been in for 20 years. Yeah, I wanted more out of life. And I didn't know it yet. But that's, I was, I was leaning toward wanting to live full and work fun. And I couldn't verbalize it back then. But I didn't want work to suck the life out of me. And I didn't want to be miserable. I wanted, I wanted to see more of of the country. I wanted, you know, I just wanted more. Something was just amiss. I wanted to be geographically independent. That was part of, of my mission back then. So I started to do some research of what was going to be my next big adventure in life. And then I found it. This is what I found. I stumbled upon the word virtual assistant. It was a legit thing. It, it was not this get rich quick work from home scheme because you can see those a lot and especially back then 10 years ago. But this was a real thing, but a little bit hard to believe that I could create a business revolving around the office skills I already knew. I could create this virtual assistant type of business. And the biggest resource I turned to back then was today's guest. Tanya Sutherland. Now, Tanya is the pioneer in the VA ecosystem with over two decades of experience in virtual assistance, bringing to light the concept of virtual assistance. She's the pioneer in this industry. Not only is Tanya a six-figure virtual assistant, but she is also the creator of the virtualassistantcareer.com training system. Since 2003, Tanya has taught thousands of people worldwide to start their own virtual assistants businesses. Nobody, I mean nobody, has been doing this longer she is the epitome of consistency. I love it. Tanya has been featured across many popular media outlets, including Dr. Phil, Reader's Digest, Entrepreneur, and Redbook. Now, sure, now the idea of working remotely isn't so foreign as it once was. The concept for many back then, just 10 years ago, like when I was there, was merely wishful thinking because they thought they had to be tethered to this office job. But today, the climate has changed. Today, the realization that long-term virtual work is much more obtainable. Tanya's forward thinking has paved the way for thousands of people on their journey of living full through fun work. So I am super glad for you to meet Miss Tanya Sutherland. Tanya, welcome to the Live Full Work Fun podcast. It is such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm just joyous to be here. Yes. Well, you probably don't know this. Um, In fact, I'm sure you don't know this, but 10 years ago, 
you had made a significant difference for me and the trajectory of my life. 10 years ago is when I started Scrivener Solutions. And that's when I stumbled across the term virtual assistants. And that's when I met you online and gobbled up your resources. And you have been a pivotal part of my life. And I just want to thank you. Well, thank you, Gayla, because you know what, that's what makes it special for me is to know that people got something out of whatever I was teaching or training and, you know, showing people the way to become a virtual assistant and stuff. It's when you get feedback like that, that really makes it worthwhile. Like, Hey, yeah, I can get up tomorrow morning and do some more of this. Right. Because that's, fills my juices, right? It gives me my kicks to hear stuff like that. So glad it worked for you. (laughs) Yes. Before we get started on my real questions, I would love for you to share maybe a fun fact about yourself that's not necessarily in your bio. Okay, I've got one for you. Guess what I have in my living room? I don't know. No, you're not going to know. I have three motorcycles in my living room. Three motorcycles? What kind? Three motorcycles. Uh, there's an old 1973 Honda 125. That's mine, the CB Honda. And then my husband's got two, one old AJS 56 or something like that. And another old Suzuki, but they kind of are in display in our, it's almost like a bar when you walk into our <laughs> living room, right? You've got How motorcycles fun. and tables and yeah. So the garage is not good enough for those motorcycles. It's had to be in the living room. The garage is full of motorcycles, so we had to move some into the living room. That's actually what happened. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I love that. Tanya, you know, now the concept of being a virtual assistant is so much more well-known now than it was 10 years ago, and definitely much more known than when you got started. You've been in the industry for 20 years, and What was that pivotal point that got you going down the road of being a virtual assistant? For me, it was, you know, I I separated from my husband, going through a divorce. I had three children, single mom. Daycare was going to cost me a fortune back then, plus the rent and everything else. I didn't know how I was going to make ends meet. So I was a legal secretary. And I thought, why can't I take this work at home doing this? I mean, there's no reason I can't. And at the time, yeah, lawyers didn't want to work with you because they had such strict, you know, things going on in their lives that they didn't want to source anything outside of their office. But I did find that I could do some secretarial administrative work for clients and companies and stuff like that. And bonus I didn't have to pay for child care and bonus I was here when the kids were around even like the day my son knocked his teeth out at the bike park right I could go over and get them like it wasn't like I was at a job and I loved it you know the kids although weren't looking for me in the kitchen they'd come into my office to find me right like so I wasn't like the mom baking all these cookies and stuff for kids but I was there for them you know I was home and they can appreciate that now. I mean, my daughter's a virtual assistant now too. She's been one for 10, 12 years now. So uh, yeah, it's quite a way to live. I I love it. Yeah. Now, how did you balance having, because during COVID, there was a lot of challenges that people that weren't used to working at home, all of a sudden were working at home and their kids were at home too. They were so used to that separation. Did you have some of those similar challenges and just figure out a rhythm? Yeah. In the beginning you do, you you know, like I can remember being on the phone and doing all these hand singles to the kids to quit fighting while I'm on the phone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, like little things like that would happen. It never failed. Soon as you got on the phone with someone, or nowadays it would be a Zoom call, the kids would start acting up, right? So I did adjust to, you know, I would be doing things more in the evenings when they were in bed. I did a lot of my work during then or when they were in school. And it just works. I mean, when they were little, they weren't in school, obviously. 
And I did most of my work from eight till two in the morning, but you know, I could rest and do other things with them through the day. And it just, you, you just switch your schedule around. It depends. I thought it was exciting because, you know, I could do whatever I wanted, really just got to get those hours in for work. Right. 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 Speaking of COVID-19, have you seen changes in the industry? Yeah. Well, now we don't have to educate everybody how important or how to work from home. Right? <laughs> like, before it was always like you had to convince the client that yes, it's secure us working from home. Don't worry, you know, all that, the little things. Yes, your passwords will be fine or we'll get your, we won't lose your files. We have backup systems, little things like that. Now everybody understands it because a lot of people have had to be forced to work at home. So they had to figure that out too. So I just find it's more acceptable now. Uh, I don't have to educate someone that, Getting on a Zoom call is a hard thing to do. Most people know how to do Zoom because of the pandemic and, you know, because they've been on with their families or whatever it is trying to converse. And I think the pandemic really did wondrous things for us as virtual assistants because we were already there as well. And we didn't have to learn how to work from home. We were already doing it. I found it easier, uh, just easier to communicate because people thought it was okay. We don't have to meet at the coffee shop. And it was, I had a tough time starting. It's like, we don't have to meet in person for me to work virtually for you. And there was a lot of education. Yes. To that it's, you know, the the advantages of hiring a, a virtual assistant is efficiency and cost savings instead of hiring somebody full time and having like the the footprint the office space footprint you had taught me that can you speak a little bit about the advantages for entrepreneurs or businesses to consider an independent contractor or virtual assistant right it's a lot cheaper in the long run you're only paying like if you had to have someone in house You'd have to pay them in-house for eight hours work, whether they're going to the washroom or having lunch or whatever, maybe lunch wasn't paid, but um, you know, you'd have a lot of uh, maybe dental plans, medical plans, CPP, it depends where you live, all the different things, right? That you'd also have to pay where if you hire an independent contractor or a virtual assistant, you don't have to pay that stuff. You don't have to buy their software. You don't have to provide them a computer. You don't have to provide them with a notebook to take notes in, like where you would have to do that if they were in your office. So there's a lot of savings in that area, not to mention just a a virtual assistant. They time themselves pretty accurately. So you're paying for their time. Typically, this is typically unless you're doing some other type of agreement with them. But if you buy an hour of their time, you're getting an hour of their time and it's dedicated to you. It's usually very specialized to, you know, uh, that you're hiring them because they, maybe they specialize in their admin services. Maybe that's what it is. And they're, you know, they know how to do all that stuff. They're taking that away from you so that you can now go out and charge $300 an hour with your coaching calls or whatever you're doing. You don't have to do that bookkeeping or whatever they might be doing for you, social media, anything. Are there any particular niches that are hot right now? You know, there's a lot of them out there because everybody is starting to work from, well, not starting to work from home. Some of them are going back to work too, right? But things in social media came up quite a bit recently, like even Facebook ads, Google ads, things like that are hot markets to get into, but they're like a whole specialization. Once you're one of them, you're not calling yourself a virtual assistant anymore. You better be calling yourself a Facebook ad specialist or something, Mm -hmm. right? But getting in and just learning to know if you know that or would like to do it, you might just do social media and stuff in the beginning, but that's a real um, big market Uh, content marketing, anything that helps a client make money. You know, if you can blog for them, if you can create images in Canva for their social media or things like that, those are good areas to be in right now. So many different things. 
you know, I have one VA that I is a student and all she does is um, moderate and deal with Zoom calls for her clients, right? So like, that's a brand new thing that's come out recently because of everybody working from home and she knows Zoom inside and out or, but yeah, those are some cool ones that have come up more maybe because of the pandemic, but any kind of specialization gala is, is going to be the best niche. Uh, I have one that specializes in all she does is works for veterinarians. So it doesn't have to be a service so much. It could be an industry where she only works for veterinarians and she knows the lingo inside and out. And once one veterinarian, she gets a good word from them, then the next one wants them. And then they're all coming at her. Right. But it could be that route instead of something like specializing in social media or you know, doing member sites or just specializing in email organization or travel, different things to organize your client and get them five extra hours a week is beneficial to them. Have you seen an increase in, and maybe it's decreasing now, but virtual assistants who you mentioned the the Zoom moderator, but who specialize in online events? Yeah, definitely. People are doing a lot of summits, they're calling them, or just webinars and launches and things like that. Just being able to do, understand the meeting rooms and how to moderate and things like that. Yeah, big niche for there too, definitely. And I think you made a a great point. A virtual assistant is kind of a generic term. And when you get into some specialty niches, those virtual professionals may call themselves something different. Yeah. Like, I think everybody comes in as a virtual assistant. I do. Yeah. Yeah. And then they start to play around with what kind of services they like, because you really don't know right off the bat. Maybe some people do. I shouldn't say they don't. Okay. There are some people that do. I had a VA come in, she started up her VA business. And as soon as she did social media, she said, screw this, I want to do Facebook ads. You know, like she was just right there within a couple of weeks, she knew. But she did originally come in as a VA. And I think most of us do. And we play around with what we like doing, because once you love what you're doing, you'll do much more of it. And you want to love what you're doing. So good example, I came in thinking I would work for lawyers, because I was a legal secretary. And Lawyers weren't interested then. And truthfully, I was kind of glad because I didn't like working for them anyways, right? They have a different mentality. But, uh, you know, some people might just come in and that's what they're going to do. And they know that right off the bat from their background. But my background was legal and I ended up in online marketing. And that was totally complete opposite of what I was trained as a secretary in the real world for. But I started to like it and love it. And yeah. And so you you got into the online marketing world way back when. And then after you were in business for a while, because you didn't have any, hardly any resources to know really to guide you to jumpstart your business. And you decided to create that space. How long were you in business before you you started your online, your yeah. teaching, yeah, your programs. I started, I stepped out and became a virtual assistant in 1997. It's so long ago now, I feel like not even saying it out loud, but I was like two years old then. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but it was about five years when I, it was 2003 is when I, I needed the camaraderie, the community. That was what I was missing in working from home. Like there's a couple of things I think are really important. It's besides getting clients is community and coaching. They're really important in your growth as a business. I was missing the community. So we didn't have Facebook ads back then or Facebook groups back then. So I started up my forum for virtual assistants, which has evolved over the years. You know, then I, when I had like 500 virtual assistants in there in the first year, all their questions about well, how did you do this, Tanya? How did you get up and, you know, all that started, which led me, funny enough, I started up that forum just to learn how to optimize it for the search engines, right? Like that Mm -hmm. was why I started it. Yeah. Because I had to 
test it. And then all of a sudden I had 500 virtual assistants in there. And then it's, we've had over 200,000, I think, go through it over the last 20 years, right? Yeah, it just evolved from there. And that's where I got into the training program, my virtual assistant training career program that teaches you from bottom up to top, from getting started to scaling out and making six figures, which is very possible. We have lots of VAs doing that. So yeah, that and my membership, and I've done the summit for virtual assistants for 20 years. Yeah, or not 20 years, 20 seasons, 22 seasons, I think this season. Tell us about uh, your summit. So you offer a summit. Is it yeah, it comes twice out again in the fall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was doing it twice a year, but I decided to do it once a year. It's a big job. <laughs> it is a big job. Yes. You but, get, uh, you get uh, what about 20, 15 or 20 speakers to talk about different aspects of growing uh, your online business? Yeah, it's, it's basically to find clients, teach virtual assistants specifically, which is an umbrella term for anybody doing creative, technical, or um, administrative work, in my opinion. You know, we all start out as a VA, but we find our way elsewhere and call ourselves, if you want to scale. Some people just love the VA world and they stay there, which is fine. But uh, yeah, the summit's fun. It's probably you'll have a link in the chat area or in the in the areas. show notes. Yeah, I'll have I'll have uh, all the links to to your resources. And one of the things that I remember is that you had a job posting board. Do you still have that where that, people are looking? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's for our um, members will apply. Well, any client can post a job for free. That job posting will go into our directory of virtual assistants and then you'll get responses yeah Mm -hmm. that's a really nice service to you were one of the first to seo up the the va space it's pretty cool (laughs) so you had to keep these names and i'm sure did you like secure a lot of uh urls at one way. time I did. At uh-huh. one time I did. I slowly, I think I only pay about 1500 of a year now for all my <laughs> domains, <laughs> but it used to be quite a bit more. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to congregate them all into one, you know, now at this point and just at virtualassistantcareer.com and just get everything there over there because it's a career, you know, it's a career choice you may start out as a VA but it's a lifelong time working from home and growing and yeah your business might not be a virtual assistant business 10 years down the road or very well could be but it's a really fun career to be in that's for sure so have you had any challenges along the way oh sure (laughs) (laughs) if there has been any challenge I have faced it I think that's how you learn right um Everything and anything that could happen has probably happened from, you know, websites going down, um, not having backup plans, uh, just your computer getting a virus or crashing or whatever. Uh, There's a lot of things that can happen. And you just got to kind of grin through them, Gayla, because they do help and teach you to uh, how to get through it the next time because it's going to happen. Things like that are good. There are going to be obstacles uh, when you're starting up or when you're running a successful business, there's still obstacles, right? You just got to, it's part of the game. It's part of the fun and look at it as something you'll learn from. Hopefully it doesn't happen again, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there's been lots of obstacles. (laughs) Well, Over the years, I mean, you've been doing what you do for uh, many years. Had there been a time that you wanted to go back to a traditional job? Sure. Every once in a while, you'll think, why am I doing this? You know, like I see my husband going to work nine to five every day. He's a motorcycle mechanic. So like, and he doesn't come home and live with his boss in the evening because he doesn't have his boss. Where me, I come home and I got to live with myself every night right but I'll tell you what the it's like having kids right every once in a while they'll bring you they probably 
bring when it comes to joy and um, you know worry, worry about your kids. Probably you're worrying a lot about them, but the you know just seeing their nice little face when they're asleep at night or when they come running to you, mom, mom, whatever it is, and they're so excited. Those joys are so worth anything. And I, it's the same as in business. It's, how can I say, there's no other, I would never do anything else except work for myself um, or have other people work for me and do the work. Yes, <laughs> in an agency and things like that. But just having the freedom to stop and, well, like recently I've had to help pick up my grandkids from school after school. And you know what, I can block out that one and a half hours every day, I just got to make it up somewhere else. But it's not like I'm in a corporate job where they're not going to let you do stuff like that. Right? Uh, I don't have to wear makeup every day if I don't want to, you know, I can wear whatever I want. I mean, I still get dressed. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. Yeah, it's just, I really love working from home. I sometimes my husband will say, why don't you just get a new job? Like another, you know, when you've had a bad day and, and I says, you know what, honey, I just need you to whine on for a bit <laughs> and then I'll be over it. But there's nothing would ever get me back in a corporate office ever again. I just love the freedom. I love being able to do what I want when I want, whenever I want. Yeah. I think the longer that I'm away from that, cause I came from corporate world and 10 years out, the longer I'm away, the more unemployable I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not sure if anybody wants me uh, as an employee anymore, <laughs> maybe as an independent contractor. Yes. <laughs> but Tanya, would you have done anything differently on your journey? Yeah, I, I would have two things. I would have outsourced a lot earlier than I did, but I always thought I can't outsource. I can't afford it. I'm not making enough money, you know, but I should have done that earlier just because it takes, yeah, it takes a few months to get the outsourcing all working and everything. But once it's working, oh, what a, you know, even just outsourcing work to the housekeeper that's here today, you know, or something like that. The other one was, well, community is really important. Finding your community. Um, don't try and do it alone your community, wherever it is, whether it's, you know, our VA insiders or a Facebook group or whoever it is of like-minded people find that because I still hang out in real time sometimes with people I've met 20 years ago online or just having them being able to get on the phone and, and call them and say, I'm having a bad day. You, you need that support and they understand what you're going through because family doesn't really understand <laughs> No, no, no. I had the challenge of, hey, well, she's not going into the office. You're working from home. You must have all the time in the world. Yes. <laughs> There's those interruptions and in how to, to manage that. Tanya, as we wrap up our conversation, I would love for you to share a resource or a book that has made a difference for you professionally or personally. You know what I'm reading right now is it's the big leap. You guys have probably heard of that one. Mm -hmm. um, I can't even remember the author, but uh, it's a good book. It, it, it pushes you and makes you appreciate a little bit more of uh, your success and what it can be. And it, it was, it's, it's, I'm always reading one book every month or week that is related to business, but that's the one I'm reading right now. And it's pretty good. That's a good one. Yes. How can everybody stay in contact with you? Of course, my links are going to be down there on your sheet, but, uh, you know, do get signed up to my email list. Uh, that, that was the other thing that I thought I would have done earlier. Gala is start my email list, start that as soon as you can, but, uh, yeah, keep in contact with me and we give out lots of freebies and just hit reply to any of my emails and I'll personally respond to you. So yeah, you have some great resources and you have like uh, 10 free resources for your virtual assistant business growth. And uh, you have a great uh, ebook. Can you tell us about that? 
Well, if you're if you're a virtual assistant, just sign up for the 10 free resources and that will give you some stuff to get going uh, from how to figure out your pricing to just a whole bunch of different stuff that you need to do in the beginning, a checklist and everything else. And that will also introduce you to my programs, which I'm not even going to talk about. But when you're ready, I got programs to help you get started and to uh, keep you in a community just always having someone there as coaching. Uh, the other freebie I got for you is for the clients out there who want to hire a VA. There's an ebook on helping you to find your ultimate VA. Plus you can go to our job board, check out our virtual assistant directory and post a job for free anytime you want. We'll be there waiting for you. Well, thank you so much, Tanya, for being here, being on the show. It's been a pleasure. You've been in my life for 10 years, and it's just wonderful to just be face-to-face -face virtually with you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me, Gayla. I was really honored to be here and to hear your story. That really makes me smile. Well, thanks for being here with me today. Now, be sure to scroll down to the show notes and grab all of those free resources. They are super valuable. And let's continue this conversation, shall we? Hop over to Facebook and post what your biggest takeaway from today's show was in the Live Full Work Fun group. Now, my biggest takeaway is the reminder that it is so important to surround yourself with the resources of a community to help you grow and learn. I didn't do that soon enough. And, and just like what Tanya said, that was one of the, the regrets that she had. She didn't do that soon enough. And when you don't go to a traditional office, you don't have that interaction. You need that interaction. Working virtually, you must make the effort to participate in communities of like-minded folks who can help you keep that spark ignited. So if you are really honed in to being a virtual assistant, I encourage you to, to follow and, and join Tanya's community. I'd love for you to be involved in, in my community of Live Full Work Fun. Hop over to Facebook and let's keep that spark ignited. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's episode you know at least one person that this message could help that could ignite that spark for them to live a full life or to find work that would be fun. So please share this episode with at least one person who you think may find it helpful and enjoyable. Just text the link to them. It's that simple. Well, thanks for listening. And until next time, live full, work fun.